So um, this is the beginning of our program information session. Thank you for being here. It's Thursday, December 3rd, 2015. My name is Anne-Marie Edgar and I'm the Executive Director of Make a Change Canada. Thank you for joining us and again welcome to our session. With us today we have Sandy Baker who's doing ASL interpretation for members of our audience. As well, we have Douglas Tardiff, who is our team leader at Make a Change, and Mary Alton, who works as our employment case manager. As well, we have Marlisa Antifeyev, who works as a program assistant in our programs, and Kayleen Selig, who works as our technology coordinator as well, and she's recording our session today for further distribution. Thank you again very much for joining us. I want to give you an overview before I get into the presentation in full. What I'm going to cover is who Make a Change Canada is and what we do. I want to talk about the clients that we serve as well as the area that we cover throughout Canada. Our programs and services, that's the core of what we do, it's at the heart and I'm going to talk about our programs and services in, in quite a lot of detail. We're very much a labor market oriented organization, so I'm going to touch on the labor market, which is a very interesting topic at all times. Then, as far as Make a Change Canada goes in general, I want to, I want to talk about what's coming up in, in the future at Make a Change and how you can get involved if you're so inclined as well. Finally, um, methods of contacting us and keeping in touch uh, will be outlined as well. So do, throughout the whole presentation, feel free to comment or ask questions using the chat box. You can raise your hand at any time and as well, if you have a webcam, we do encourage people to use a webcam or microphone as well. Thank you so much again. So I think it's good to start with a little bit of history of the organization. I have a couple of slogans up on the screen here. Really, in a nutshell, we're virtual learning in the real world. So we're very much keyed into technologies, but at the same time, really keyed into the labor market, um, certain issues in our population, in our society, very much real world. And we really frame our programs around the needs of people and the marketplace at all times. And then on the other hand, we're a national charity. So another slogan that really sums us up well is that we're helping Canadians from coast to coast realize their full potential. A little bit of history, we're now in our 10th year here at Make a Change Canada, moving into our 11th. We were formerly called the Canadian Society for Social Development, but about a year ago we renamed the organization. And our name's actually bilingual, it's Make a Change Canada, Ferrand en Changement Canada. So um, we, we picked up formally the uh, francophone component to our business name, which is really neat as well. The organization was founded in 20, 2004, federally, and in 2005 we gained our charitable status. Our programs first got their start in the Community Futures Organization, and for those of you in the East, that's um, you know, the community business development uh, organizations in the Maritimes throughout Ontario and really all across the country were, were, were linked with those organizations really through interests. We have common interests, um, they're entrepreneurial, we're entrepreneurial, and so on and so forth. So um, that's a really interesting beginning for our organization and a really great start. We're a virtual organization with employees in BC, Alberta, Ontario, and New Brunswick. And to date, we have served around 1,900 clients through our programs. Turning to really what's at the heart of this organization is our mission and what we do. We develop and deliver business startup and web technology training to people facing challenges to employment. The training is delivered from our program websites and features a self-paced and supportive learning environment. Through our online curriculum and our skilled and caring service teams, Make a Change Canada is empowering others to realize their full potential. And Mary Alton has 
put a link into the chat area that leads to our new website. We have a new website as well, where you can read all of our guiding principles. We have a vision as well, and we have a set of um, values that we integrate into our day-to-day -day work. I like this visual. I think it really shows visually what we're all about at the present time. We have two programs. One is called the IBDE Web Essentials Web Advanced Program, and the other is called Business Abilities. Web Essentials Web Advance is a web development program teaching technology skills and Business Abilities is a program that helps new entrepreneurs start new businesses. And actually I'll get into a little bit more detail, but Business Abilities is also about making a really wise decision about whether to get into business or not. So there are people that choose to become employed uh, rather than self-employed and we can assist with helping them become employed as well. And at the whole heart of it, um, you see the heart down at the bottom and the person reaching up. It's really the heart of the organization and that is carried through to our approach to building our programming and how we serve people every day. Um, we're truly a caring organization as well, being a, being a charity. So. We have a focus on helping people. Uh, we're, as I said, a registered Canadian charity. We help people get a new start in life and we truly love what we do as well. Uh, the, the image here was from one of our Christmas parties and we actually have our Christmas parties online and you know we also have a lot of fun at work and we, we really enjoy the whole process of working together. So we've got a great team um, and you know I think that just really shows through in, in, in how we enjoy our jobs each and every day. We also have volunteers working in our organization and they've been involved in some very, very important projects for our organization, including helping our organization to gain accreditation as a national charity under the Imagine Canada Standards Program. So we're very thankful for our volunteers and our volunteers have also helped us with transcribing videos to make them more accessible for the deaf and hearing impaired. We've had volunteers helping us put together a national extravaganza over the past year. So it's huge. It's, we wouldn't be where we are today building our organization without the dedicated help of our volunteers. It's really interesting uh, to take a look visually at where our clients are located across Canada. This is a picture snapshot of clients currently in the Business Abilities program and literally our clients are stretching from the Yukon all the way through, the, through to the tip of New Brunswick currently. There's about a hundred or so clients working in the program at this time. And typically, you know, um, BC and Ontario are our highest population provinces, so that tends to be where the most clients are located, but still there's a wonderful representation all across the country in our programs. We also serve people in our business abilities program in the French language, so we have people in Quebec as well that are able to participate in our programming, and of course uh, people living as minorities throughout Canada um, with of, you know, French being their first language. So very accessible in that regard as well. This is a snapshot of the Web Essentials and Web Advanced program. And again, our reach is very similar. Um, at this time, there's about 30 clients working in this program from all across Canada. Okay, so that brings us to the next natural question. Who are our clients then and what brings them to us in the first place? Our clients are really your neighbors, your family members, your friends. It's, it's, they're people just like you. And for one reason or another though, for some reason they've fallen out of having a good position in the labor market and they really need some assistance to either A, become self-employed or to find employment again. Our clients range from having lacking education to having 
amazing educations, right from you know grade eight right to a PhD. So there's that whole range. There's people who are younger coming straight out of high school to people who are over age 65 participating in our programs. In all ways, um, our population that we're serving is very diverse in so many different ways like that. People with children, uh, people living with disabilities, people without disabilities. So it's really quite interesting and what I find too is that there's a growing segment of our clientele which are people with children with disabilities. And I think that's an interesting group to perhaps study for future. I'm really interested in the topic as well because it can be really hard to hold down a job in the regular workforce if you have a child living with a disability with high needs. So it's interesting. And um, we have people who are entrepreneurial. Uh, we tend to have a lot of artists coming into our program in all sorts of forms, photographers, there's a lot of that, technically oriented people, writing, the whole gamut. So it's all over the map. So really our clients are talented, determined, and savvy, but quite often they're stuck. That's the whole point and that's what brings them our way. I'm going to mention a few different client stories during the presentation today and in particular I'd like to introduce you to Colin. Colin's located in British Columbia. We've known Colin for many years. I mean you can see he started working with us in 2007 and actually he works as us with us as a paid consultant today so he's worked his way through our programs and is now a qualified web programmer running his own booming business um, from Surrey BC working from home. I'll, I'll read this story to you and you can visit his website as well if you'd like but Colin first heard about the IBDE course he, he wasn't working, but I was very intrigued about pursuing a career in website design. Through guided instruction, I mastered graphic and website design techniques. Throughout the course, I pushed myself to exceed teachers' expectations. The instructors in the IBDE course were always helpful to provide support when needed. They were very impressed with my internship project. Since taking the IBDE course, I've become more proficient and confident in developing websites. I have developed numerous websites since my graduation and even my clients are impressed with my work. If it weren't for the IBDE course, I don't know what I would be doing as a career. The IBDE course and instructors have given me knowledge and confidence which has shaped my career as a successful freelance website developer. I do want to mention that I do have the permission for any of the clients presented in today's presentation to use their photos and their stories and to talk a little bit about their experience. So I want to assure you that we have that permission in place. Uh, and Colin in particular, he, he lives in a major metropolitan center and he was active in the labor force as a volunteer and did then work himself into a paid position as a supervisor in a computer lab. But what happened he's, is that he's a wheelchair user and he was experiencing health issues just having to travel to work on the commute and could no longer maintain that employment in a regular workforce setting. So it's really worked out well for Colin and he sure helps us out a lot when we're stuck with some programming tasks now. So really, really an excellent um, example of the sort of result that can be achieved uh, by participating in these programs. About a year and a half ago, I was at a community meeting and the focus that day was poverty. And I've got to say that until that, day, that presentation that day, I didn't really think about our programs as alleviating poverty, but they really are helping people earn more money. So they are making a difference and giving people self-worth as well. So I think these passages, which I'll read to you, are super touching and um, well they really speak for themselves so Kalinda from British Columbia said it has been difficult to come to terms with the changes in my life since the accident that left me with a brain injury three years ago 
Programming in a quiet room is one of the few options I now have to contribute financially in my home. With this training, I have also been able to participate again in the business my husband and I built over the last 14 years. We are now able to offer web design as an option for our customers. So I think you can see what I mean. It's, they really speak for themselves. Now, Willie, who is a website owner from Saskatchewan, says, The program was very detailed and very instructive. The program helped us tremendously, and it will help us make a living. Being a disabled person, I need that because I can't go out to work. This program allowed me to set up a home-based business for me and my wife to work at home. So, I'm going to start just by getting into the service we offer through the Web Essentials Web Advanced Program. It's definitely a technology program. It's online all across Canada and, and it's college accredited as well. The program is open to anyone who meets eligibility requirements and is successful in going through the intake process, which involves about a 30-minute interview and a basic computer skills assessment. What is required is a grade 12 education or an equivalent combination of education and experience in terms of the eligibility. So it's quite forgiving and it really uh, is a key to providing education to people who would not normally have that opportunity. Another reason why, why it's so accessible to people who would not normally have that opportunity is because it's a six-month program. So it's a shorter program. It still covers so many of the key technologies that you need in the field, but it can be done in a short period of time. It's also fundable, so people can receive funding to take the program that isn't repayable. So um, they don't have to take a student loan necessarily to participate in this um, program. The uh, start date is coming up. We have the advanced um, starting in the spring and on May 30th this year. And then we'll have our next intake beginning next October in 2016. We just had an intake start and the students are doing amazingly well in the program. So it's, it's really wonderful to see happening. The skills gained are the very important fundamentals of website layout and design techniques. So right from the start, the proper way to build a website is taught. Learning Photoshop, HTML5 and CSS3 coding, which are the underpinnings of a website. That's what they're built in and that's what runs them. Web marketing as well, very important component. And in the advanced program, we're teaching PHP, MySQL, web programming. There's e-commerce in both programs. Designing for mobile is covered. And what's really interesting is that the students are building custom websites, that are building their own templates. That's key. It, we're strong proponents that you cannot just pick up with WordPress and run a business and expect to be successful. Um, you, I think you're really doing yourself a disservice to not get proper training in website development before moving into the field. That's how we feel. There are other opinions um, out there, but that is our premise that we go under. There's a practicum component as well to the program where the students build a custom design website for their own business or for an organization or community um, organization in their community. The cost of the program is $3,995 and then there is a supplies fee as well. And for each web, web advanced course, the cost is $495 per course and there's four courses in the program. I hope that gives you a really good snapshot. Um, just as a bit of a visual, that's a visual of online classes that we hold in the program and it just gives you an idea of, of what that environment looks like. A little bit more information about Web Essentials and Web Advanced and how I really see the value of the program is that it's providing these students with skills that employers today really need in anyone 
in their workforce. Uh, it's just not about pushing paper around on a desk anymore. It's all technology. It's putting links into your emails, properly formatting files, having them look good. And you know, it's really interesting to see the sorts of jobs that the graduates are moving into. Uh, they're being hired, hired into nonprofit organizations, uh, chambers of commerce, um, all this sort of th business sort of thing, but more in an administrative role. And why are they being hired? Because they can walk in that door and say, I can update your website. I can do a visual portfolio for you. I can provide those visual materials. I can do your web campaigns. All this sort of thing, write the blog. So that's putting those people with this training and college certificate ahead of other applicants in the job market. Even if they've, say, passed that age peak, it's totally working and smoothing that resume over. So it's really fabulous in that regard. So administration. Definitely people are moving into administration roles successfully. Another thing that we're seeing with a lot of our graduates is moving into the marketing field. They're working as consultants or as employees in the field. But for someone who has a background in marketing but doesn't have the technology skills, maybe they've done event management, maybe they've organized conferences, but maybe that was done about 10 years ago. Once that person has the technology skills, they are so valid in the online world. They can do an event but do all the visuals and all the social media alongside with that as well as all the web and analytics that's required. So that's happening for a lot of our graduates as well. We see people starting their own businesses and building websites for their businesses, particularly e-commerce sites where they want to do their own e-commerce. The program's very valuable in that regard. And they're working, again, for businesses in the community much because they have these skills required. We're also seeing people working in the traditional information technology role, and they are qualified as junior des designers to start in the field. The learning really never stops in technology, but definitely we're seeing people being hired on as junior designers. So they do, our graduates do earn a college certificate from Selkirk College, and for the Web Essentials program, it's a certificate in web technologies and design, and for the advanced, it's, it's a certificate in advanced web technologies and design. The key here is that with flexible and supportive online programming, the vast majority of the students succeed. It's really rewarding in that regard. We have approximately an 80% success rate with, with the students who enter the program going right through to graduation. And in the online education field, typically a success, um, the typical passing rate is about 40 to 60%. So we're really geared towards supporting and seeing those students through to completion. It's always great to get out every year at the Selkirk College graduation ceremonies in Castlegar. And here's some snapshots from the last several years where I've been able to attend. Um, it, it's a wonderful experience and um, a, a wonderful day to celebrate. I, I hope that our graduates will, at least if they're closer in the area, will attend their graduation because it's a, it really needs to be celebrated. This is another client, uh, Cameron, from Ontario, who completed both Web Essentials and Web Advanced program in 2013. And Cam's story really demonstrates the supportive aspect of the program. Cam has a blog that he writes as well, which I'm sure Mary will provide the link to. It's called CamMajorMinor.ca. Now, Cam's really open about the mental health issues that he has in his life. He suffers from bipolar disorder. And what I really like about Cam and his writing is that he gives you a really clear idea of the reality of living with bipolar disorder. It's a really scary, it can be a very scary 
uh, experience for a person to live through, to have such extremes of emotion. So I do encourage you to view the materials on his blog. He did a wonderful interview with his aunt that you can view there, uh, where he really speaks eloquently about the disability. So, um, but Cam came into our program and he pretty much went through the Web Essentials program, which is six months in length, without any major issues. But he got into the advanced program and his health went into a decline. He recognized this and he was really upfront and able to communicate with us that he was having difficulty, he was in a really bad spot, but they were working on restoring his equilibrium. And they did. They, they worked on restoring his health situation. He was able to continue in the program and he successfully graduated. So that's the sort of thing. To us, this isn't atypical. This is the typical situation. So we're very much open arms, open ears, and we're all about solutions and success. Cam's particular story. Now, I won't read this particular slide in, in detail. It's quite long. But he was able to also kind of get some support through an agency in his community. And once he graduated, he was employed pretty much immediately after. And so it was a success story in that regard as well, that he went right into the labor market after graduating. Working, I would say he was more like a junior developer role um, and also doing some design work in Photoshop. He has a background in video production, so this is what I mean, where a lot of our clients come to us already with um, being technically inclined, and he, he was working in the video field prior to joining us. So that's an awful lot of information, I think, to begin. At this point, I'd like to check in with everyone in the room. Are there anything that is there anything that surprised you about what I said so far? Uh, what do you think of our services? How about some societal issues? Are there any issues we identified that resonate with you? I really want to ask you to provide some information to everyone in the room. Thank you. I don't know if there's anyone on staff that um, might have an opportunity to reflect on some of the topics I've covered as well. That would be nice. <laughs> well, just in case anybody's just uh, thinking up some questions, I'll just uh, chime in here. Just having been with the organization for quite a number of years and, and worked with um, a lot of our, our different participants, students, clients who have come in and out of the program, both IBDE and business abilities. Um, you know, I think the thing that really strikes me is we just have phenomenal people who are really just driven to be successful in life, to find something that they can do that not only are they passionate about, but that is really doable. That's something that they can manage well in their life, that they can be successful at, that they can continue to do the work that will not just allow them to share something they're talented at or something that they really enjoy, but also they just want to be independent again. Um, so it's, it's such a special thing for us to be able to work with this caliber of people. Um, it's such an amazing opportunity and, and it truly is a blessing because there are so many people who come in through our door that offer so much inspiration in what they're able to achieve in their life and the obstacles that they're overcoming through the process that, um, I mean, you can't help but be amazed and, and really think, you know, all the things that you might have in the back of your mind that it's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. You know, I don't know if I have the talent or the gifts or the ability or I just don't know if it's feasible. You think to yourself, well, you know, you look at people who are facing some pretty adverse odds and they can do it. So you think whatever you may think is a challenge, you can do it. You can overcome it. So um, what a special experience it is for me as a staff member. Um, so I'm, I'm just grateful for the people that we do have a chance to work with because they, they truly are amazing individuals. I agree 100% Mary. 
Um, you know, I'm a pretty simple person, I think. I don't have talents in acting and film and painting, but this is the thing that I think I find about our clients. It's, it's a lot, an awful lot of our clients are pursuing, you know, a new career, but then you learn that they're poetry writers or they've written a book, that, that they're doing photography, that's phenomenal. They're, they're seamstresses on the side. They're very multifaceted and multi-talented, and I do compare that to myself. Um, I guess I'm, you know, pretty straight-laced in, in, in bring, being pretty, um, what you see is what you get, I think. But um, Natalie is a graduate, and Natalie, thank you for sharing some thoughts. I'm just going to read this out. So you graduated from the IBDE program, and you're still associated with the Business Abilities program, which is wonderful. So you say, I have taken the IBDE program and can comment on how great the staff and instructors are. The content of the program is extensive and relevant. It will be key in my future success. Thank you. I am currently involved in the Business Abilities Program and finding it helpful so far. Wonderful. Thank you, Natalie. It's uh, really important for people to, to know how it is to experience going through our program, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I do want to mention as well that Kayleen, who's recording our session today, she's working as our technology coordinator, and she's actually a graduate of Web Essentials as well. So it's such a pleasure to be working with her. And so I can speak personally that the skills gained are really important in today's workplace. Natalie says, I have had some challenges during my time with Make It in Canada and have found the organization very flexible and supportive. Thanks, Natalie. So I think I will advance. I don't see any further comments coming in. We'll have a couple more opportunities in order to uh, allow you to share some more thoughts as we move along. So turning to business abilities then. Business Abilities is an online program in entrepreneurship and career planning where clients research their business idea, prepare their financials, and produce a business plan. Participants also receive support when starting their business. So, you know, it's, it's not this finite end date where once the calendar runs out, there's no more service provided. We continue service and we're really working towards sustainability and really building, helping clients build viable businesses for the future. So that's the idea there. Now, to, as I mentioned, it isn't just about self-employment. If someone in the program discovers that they really don't want to take on that high level of responsibility of starting their own business, they're maybe not made out, cut out for it for one reason or another, personal circumstances may not be right, they decide to move into an employment situation. And what can happen there is we'll provide some support. You know, we can help and encourage and uh, look at resumes, provide feedback and whatnot. Now, if a person needs more service than what we typically provide, we can also refer to agencies in the community where um, the client can receive really in-depth service to a career agency in the community. So this is happening. Business Abilities is different than IBDE. IBDE Web Essentials Web Advanced is open to anyone meeting eligibility and entrance requirements. On, in contrast, Business Abilities is available only to people who self-identify as living with a disability. And that's actually about 15% of the population. So it is a large segment of our population as well. The difference as well is that the intake with business abilities is continuous. So we typically do an intake of clients into the program about every month or every six weeks. And this is a really neat visual um, that we actually were able to pull these visuals together 
by doing a two-year study. We did a research project on clients in the program. And one of the things we, we measured was type of disability and actually the complexities of the disability. Um, we were able to study things like chronic pain, um, medications. Um, what, is, what other disabilities do people have? What, what's the constellation of, of disabilities they may be affected by? So it was a very interesting study. It really opened up our eyes. And as you can see from this visual, there's a lot of mental health issues. People, um, there's a lot of anxiety that people feel among our, client, our, our clientele. Um, there can be low coping skills, bipolar disorder, all, you know, the whole gamut of mental health issues. There's also a lot of mobility um, and pain issues, pain and spinal cord injuries. Um, learning issues, head injuries, and chronic disease, people, or um, conditions that people have been born with as well. Um, um, cerebral palsy, sleep, somebody's mentioning sleep here. So this just gives a really good feel, I think, for the issues that people face day to day in our programs. So what do we offer through Business Abilities? Really at the core of it is the Business Abilities website. And from there, the clients are able to download worksheets, complete the worksheets, and eventually those worksheets all form the business plan. And the real key as well is the business coaching that's provided in the program. Our business coaches are amazing. I can't speak more highly of our business coaches. They're all true entrepreneurs. They're veterans in the field. They've run service businesses, technology businesses, consulting, manufacturing, through to some new businesses such as green technologies. They're very, very knowledgeable and helpful and are resourceful. We also have presentations that we hold weekly or bi-weekly in this virtual classroom. And that's a nice opportunity for people to connect with one another and benefit from a live presentation as well. The value of the program, I think that snapshot really says it all. It's the coaches. And that's also what we learned in the study that we performed was that what's really most important to our clientele is the coaches themselves. Our coaches, again, are experienced professionals. They provide wonderful guidance. They try and be timely, um, pertinent. They provide review of financial information, business plans. There's a, a whole gamut of experience there in marketing and new technologies as well. They're highly entrepreneurial and they're always a sounding board. And again, we can always provide support as well past the, the business plan completion, which is really key to longer term success. So again, this is what we learned. What matters in a coach? When we did our study, this is what clients told us, what their comments are about our coaches. They're supportive. That really comes through personable, they're accepting, they're patient, understanding, experienced. Experienced is huge. They're kind. I think that's really interesting, those uh, comments on the fingers that there's a huge component that clients have noticed that our, our coaches are kind, um, that we listen, and so on and so forth. So it's really through this that clients are able to be successful in a fle flexible programming environment. This is Shirley. Shirley is from British Columbia as well. And she went through both of the IBDE programs and graduated. I got to meet Shirley in person at one of the graduation ceremonies. And uh, it was a really fantastic day for me. I know it was amazing for Shirley because 
she was never able to attend her high school graduation, so she made a particular point to come over for this graduation. She lives over a mountain pass. She's from Vernon, BC. She had to go over quite a mountain pass. Although this was in April, it snowed, <laughs> if you can believe it. So it snowed. Um, her daughter had hit a deer. Her car was totaled. We sort of went out on a limb and we helped her to be able to rent a car and come over. She made it and we got to meet in person. It was it's one of the highlights of my entire time with Make a Change, I would say. Anyway, what Shirley has to say is the program saved my life, literally. I felt hopeless and now I don't feel that way. I feel like I can control my destiny and do something to change my circumstances. It's a process. When disabled, you, you lose your self-esteem. I'm a much better person now. And maybe that's how she feels internally, but she's, she's always been a wonderful person, I, I can assure you. So I just find that comment interesting, but um, she's an amazing person. Our clients, there's a whole segment of our clientele as well that's actually quite renowned and well-known. Um, and we've been able to live through these experiences with them. We're very, very proud. Uh, a couple of our clients have ha gained the Queen Elizabeth um, Volunteerism Award. And um, up on the top left is Jean Oostrom, and she's also written a book. She survived a head injury, and it's a huge interest of hers, but she won this award through volunteerism in the community caring to help other people who've experienced head injuries. And then Donald Berry, he's these two photos on the right hand side and in the middle. Um, he also got the same award and he had the opportunity to meet with David Onley, the Lieutenant Governor, and had his photo taken. And also with George Mephopoulos. So that was, I know, a highlight for him probably of his whole life. He's a great writer. He um, works as a, as a paid uh, web developer for an organization that's involved in film production for people with disabilities as well. Down on the bottom left-hand corner, that's Louise Russo. Yeah. Louise had an awful experience of being caught in the crossfire of a gang shooting. This was a number of years ago. But, um, you know, she's, she's going to be living in a wheelchair since that point in time, but she didn't let that get the better of her. She started a foundation called WAVE, Work Against Violence Everywhere, and what through her foundation, she's providing grants to youth to go out and do these projects in the community, speaking out against violence. So it's super important work, and she's from Ontario. Um, she actually lives in, I think it's Toronto, um, but I had the opportunity to speak with her on the phone, and she's a fantastic person as well. In the middle, um, on the bottom row, that is Lynn Mui. Lynn is actually a member of our board of directors. Lynn has written a whole series of books about domestic violence and addiction. And they're great books. If that's a topic that interests you, much like um, Cam Miner's writing gives you an idea about bipolar disorder. Lynn's writing is also very descriptive and gives you an idea about, to me, how a person could become entrapped living in such dire circumstances and how hard it can be to escape. Um, so Lynn is successful as well. She, one of her books has been turned into a screenplay um, and they're working to get it actually into film. So at some point you may see her story on the big screen as well. And down in the bottom right hand corner is um, a fellow out in New Brunswick and he is a fiddlehead hunter. His name is Dwight Thornton and he's just so outgoing. He um, also has a mushroom business, a mushroom harvesting business and I like to say that literally his business has mushroomed. He has an outfitters component, a lodge. He's been involved in the food industry, uh, working with chefs to develop some really neat recipes and all this sorts of thing. So he's very entrepreneurial for sure. And he was featured on the CBC program Land and Sea uh, on a wild food 
food special that they had. So, you know, there's some people who have had some huge accomplishments, but every one of our clients amazes us in what they're achieving and all the activities that they are, are undertaking each and every day. It's really amazing. So, now that we've talked about our programs and services, I want to check in again. Um, I'm wondering if you feel like there's a program that's a better fit for you, and why would that be? Have you participated in our programs or volunteered with us? Sometimes we get career practitioners in the room, so we like to ask, have your clients participated? Do you have clients who are considering participating? And anyway, what has been your experience? Do you have anything um, at this point to add? I do welcome you to take the microphone or to type in the chat area. Now, um, Doug, I wonder if at this point you may have some personal reflection or professional reflection that you'd like to share. It's always good to call on staff as well. <laughs> I thought I'd bring up my face just <laughs> to show that I'm still here. The um, Business Abilities Program um, isn't as glitchy as the IBDE as far as slides are concerned because we are working with individuals who, uh, as Anne-Marie pointed out, are either in the arts business or they've written a book or the or they're, act, or they're doing mushrooms, or they're doing whatever it is that they want to do. They're pursuing a dream. And uh, we as business coaches um, not only help the clients through to the point of uh, getting them to a business plan, and we feel very strongly about the business plan, and it's the most important document you can produce because it essentially sets the uh, trajectory as to whether or not you're going to be successful or not. It keeps you focused, etc. But we work with the clients following uh, the creation of the business plan. And as a result of that, we, we, come, we become very um, entrenched and very involved in, in some of the ventures that uh, they, they do undertake. We have a, a section in our program which we call aftercare. It's really a misnomer. It's the continuation program where uh, the individuals uh, who were clients in the past uh, are no longer asking for help on a regular basis but they want to maintain the contact with the business coach and with the organization because they were well served during the time that they were getting their business together. And I can say that we've got quite a number of people in the uh, aftercare program uh, who contact us from time to time and, and are moving on to the next level and to the next, uh, the next thing that they want to accomplish as far as their business is concerned. That's wonderful because what it tells us is that the coaching that we're providing in the program um, is worthwhile uh, and uh, that we're keeping current with what's taking place in the world and that the clients trust um, what we're telling them as well and that what we're, what we're giving them is of value. So uh, we're very pleased to be able to do that. And, it, and it's also great from us. I mean, you can see from my hair that it's not brown. I am gray. And um, I've often been asked, uh, Doug, are you going into retirement? And, and I think there's a whole new area these days. And uh, I've heard it. I heard the comment, and it's something I, I didn't come up with. This someone else did, and it's called rehirement. And essentially, what's happening is that we're also getting clients who have had careers, who have done things in their life, and they're looking at wanting to do something else. And instead of retirement, they're looking for retirement. It could be a job, could be something that they want to contribute to the community, could be something that's fun and uh, that they've never tried before, and we're there to be able to help them along and uh, see how things are going. So uh, it, it's been a, a great joy. I'm glad to see on, in the slides that uh, many of the clients uh, uh, that we're showing on the slides I've actually met and I've had personal contact with, and it's. It's good to hear from uh, from them from time to time as they go through their businesses. They're, they become uh, more friends than acquaintances. And uh, we were able, uh, in a couple of instances, to be able to uh, recommend people that uh, to them for hiring purposes and things of that nature. So it's kind of great. You can see that they're 
creating jobs in the community. Their uh, their businesses are prospering, and they're bringing in other people as well. So for for me particularly, I find that's uh, really rewarding, and I look forward to uh, those type of things taking place. Thank you. It's great thoughts there, Doug. I mean, just like our coaches are pretty much serial entrepreneurs, right, from, from a great idea to the next idea and so on and so forth, and they might have, you know, a lot of things on the go. So are our clients, I'm finding, more and more all the time. If, you know, they, they can kind of try one idea as well and then um, if that doesn't work, sometimes they're picking up a new ball and, and going in another direction. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting uh, as well with that. I should mention that part of what we're doing at Make a Change Canada will be to start a business ourselves called a social enterprise in which we'll be employing our own clientele, working in a call center type of environment, but virtually from home. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, where we'll be developing this project over the next, oh, six months or so, and then piloting it. So do keep that in mind as well. Okay, so we're just about done, but before we finish up, I um, want to mention what's coming up at Make a Change Canada. So as mentioned, Business Abilities is a continual intake, and there's the web address to be able to apply online. And then Web Advanced, we have the uh, next program starting in May 2016, the Web Advanced program. Web Essentials Intake 12 will be starting in October 2016. And we really just had a whole string of exciting events. So, But there are some interesting things coming up that are fun to participate in. In the spring 2016, we'll have our annual event. It's a student showcase and website competition. And you can participate either as a new graduate from 2016 or a graduate from any of the prior graduation years. And we're getting some really neat surprises, um, prizes together. So it's worth participating for sure and a great way to get your name out about your business. We are putting together currently a calendar for 2016. Kayleen's helping out with that as well, doing a great job. Toby, who was in the classroom, is actually going to be contributing some photography to be placed in the calendar. So do watch for that. Keep your address with us current because we have an extensive mailing list and we want all our clientele and partners to have a copy of the calendar. So don't be afraid to ask if you don't receive one, but um, this is just the cover. This is just a bit of a teaser. It's going to be a really nice calendar again this year. The artwork behind me is from the calendar last year as well as behind Sandy. So um, it, it was a lovely calendar as well. It's a, tradition that we want to continue. So now if you missed our 10-year extravaganza, please do take a peek. Um, the link is down below there. You can either go to the web link on our new website that Mary gave or go to bit.ly forward slash save the eighth in order to view the event. It was a lot of fun and I do actually have a photo uh, from the event itself. That's, that's our host generator and myself on stage and you can sort of see the action that was happening on stage from this shot. It was a lot of fun and there were some amazing stories shared in the presentation so um, it'll really give you an idea what we're all about here at Make a Change Canada it, even further in depth. So we are very active in the social media. We're on all the major sites. That's a great way to get some more great success stories and, and learn more about our organization. You can also attend online sessions that we hold at any time. They're available free of charge and we, we welcome everyone to attend. If you're a client or graduate, you're more than welcome to share your story big or small, we can always do something in social media. We like to know what you're doing out in your community or on the big World Wide Web. You can become a program ambassador. If you like what we do, share the news. 
uh, tell a friend, tell your career counselor, let's get the word out, let's help more people get a new start in life. We also welcome volunteers to our team. If you want to get some, want to get back, really neat opportunities through our projects. Don't forget that we're a charitable organization and we do accept donations. Um, that's going to be a really important key for us in future to be able to continue offering and build the level of support that we're offering to clients in our programs. So, you know, if you know some sort of a mentor in the community that has the means, we are a charity and we're always looking for new donors to be able to support us in our work. We're accredited under the Imagine Canada Standards Program, and we're really only one of about 150 charities in Canada to make that achievement. So we're pretty, um, pretty well established in that regard. I'm wondering if anyone has any final thoughts. We've had a lot of information shared both by yourselves and myself, uh, but if there's anything that you'd like to comment on or um, tell us what you're taking away from today's session, please feel free to do so. We're about ready to wrap it up, but if there's any last thoughts, please feel free to share. I've certainly enjoyed the presentation and it's been great to be in the same room with Sandy Baker here today. Uh, she had a little bit of a technical issue, but she's firmly back online now. Thank you so much, Marlisa, for attending today. And Natalie, it was really great to see you here. And thank you for your wonderful comments. I hope we can connect personally in the not too distant future. I, I, I'd really like to have a chat with you at some point and learn more about what you're doing. So everyone, do have a fantastic day. Um, don't forget, there's so many ways to reach, uh, reach us. And thank you so much for attending and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye for now.